Hi, I'm Erin Bow, the author of Plain Cake, and you're joining me here today in my office, which, yes, does double as a pole dancing studio. People always think I'm kidding, but I'm not. Here, this is my bit in here. No poles. It's a nice color, huh? What can I tell you? The light is good, the rent is cheap, the pole dancers are only here at night. Anyway, I'm making my first video log today because I'm counting down. This is my book, Plain Cake. It took me six years to write, and it's been two since it was accepted by Arthur A. Levine Books at Scholastic. But now its release on September 1st is only five days away. So to mark the countdown, I'm going to be recording five clips from the books. Nothing fancy. No special effects, no spoilers. Just me reading. A little old-fashioned storytelling. And I'll start from the beginning. A long time ago, in a market town by a looping river, there lived an orphan girl named Plain Kate. She was called this because her father had introduced her to the new butcher, saying, This is my beloved, Katerina Svetlana, after her mother who died birthing her, and God rest her soul, but I call her just Plain Kate. And the butcher, swinging a cleaver, answered, That's right enough, Plain Kate, she is plain as a stick. A man that treasured humor, especially his own, the butcher repeated this to everyone, and after that she was called Plain Kate. But her father called her Kate my star. Plain Kate's father, Poiter, was a wood carver. He gave Kate a carving knife before most children might be given a spoon. She could whittle before she could walk. When she was still a child, she could carve a rose that strangers would stop to smell, a dragonfly that trout would rise to strike. In Kate's little town of Samale, people thought there was magic in a knife. A person who could wield a knife well was, in their eyes, halfway to a witch. So plain Kate was very small the first time someone spat at her and crooked their fingers. Her father sat her down and spoke with great seriousness. You are not a witch, Katerina. There is magic in the world, and some of it is wholesome and some of it is not, but it is a thing in the blood, and it is not in yours. The foolish will always treat you badly, because they think you are not beautiful, he said, and she knew this was true. Plain Kate, she was plain as a stick, thin as a stick, flat as a stick. She had one eye the color of river mud, and one eye the color of the river. Her nose was too long, and her brows were too strong. Her father kissed her twice, once above each eyebrow. We cannot help what fools think, but understand it is your skill with a blade that draws this talk. If you want to give up your carving, you will have my blessing. I will never give it up, she answered. And he laughed and called her his brave star and taught her to carve even better. They were busy. Everyone in that country, no matter how poor, wore a talisman called an obiarca. Those who could hung larger obiarcas on horse stalls and doorposts and above their marriage beds. No lintel was uncarved in that place. The walls bore saints and niches, and the roads were marked with little shrines on posts, which housed sometimes saints and sometimes older, stranger things. Plain Kate's father was even given the honor of replacing Samale's Vesey, the great column in the center of the market that showed the town's angels in coats of arms. The new Vesey was such good work that the guild masters sent a man from Lowe to see it. The man made Kate's father a full master on the spot. My daughter did some of the angels, Poiter said, gathering Kate up and pulling her forwards. The guild man looked up at the faces that were so beautiful they seemed sad. The wings that looked both strong and soft, like the wings of a swan that can kill a man with one blow. Apprentice her, he said. If she likes, said Porter, and when she is of age. When the guild man went away, plain Kate chided her father, You know I will be your apprentice. You are the star of my heart, he said. But it is two years before you are of apprenticing age and anything might happen. She laughed at him. What will happen is that I will be a full master by the time I am twenty. 
But what happened was that her father died.